So Liverpool is where you're headed uh, tonight, yeah. right? Yeah, I'm getting on the Flying plane back. tonight. Can you fly, you fly direct to Liverpool from here? Uh, fly to Manchester and then, and right. in fact, I, um, I was gonna, hope, hoping to go direct to, to the lab, but um, I'm going, uh, diverting slightly to the BBC studios to talk about the Ebola outbreak. That's Which, right. As you know, there's been a lot of interest in. It's ongoing as we speak. I don't know when we're releasing this, but uh, it's been ongoing since March, right, of this year? Yeah, February, I think, the first cases February. were. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about that. That's a virus that gets in the brain. Yeah, right? it does, although that's not the main problem with Ebola. Right. Yeah. So why do you think the, the outbreak has spread so extensively in Africa? Yeah, this has, so, so as you know, this has been the biggest out outbreak with now more than 900 deaths and approximately 1,800 cases. And um, uh, there were some initial concerns that maybe there's something different about this virus, mm. but we know now that's not the it's case. Not, it's been sequenced, yeah. But the problem is it's, uh, it, it's all about um, how people respond when there is an outbreak. So this is the first outbreak in West Africa. Right. And essentially what we're seeing is the same kind of panicky, fearful, anxious response uh, as we saw in Central Africa when outbreaks first happened 35 years ago. So basically when people are getting sick, instead of going to see the medical authorities and getting help and getting the treatment that might save them and being put in isolation so that they don't spread the disease to mm -hmm. others. They're doing the opposite. They're running scared. It means that their families end up looking after them. So their families then get sick because, as you know, the virus is spread through bodily secretions. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, this is what's characterized the whole outbreak. And, and, and I think there have been a couple of key moments as well. So, it, it's, you know, it, it's bad enough to have all that happening. But I think the things that certainly really triggered a response in the UK and, and mm -hmm. when the government asked us to start looking at it was uh, two things that happened. Firstly, the, uh, the doctor, one of the local doctors who was supposedly leading the campaign in Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. sadly got ill and died from, from Ebola. And, you know, that triggers the response and the thoughts, well, you know, if, if, if he can't protect himself, then what, yeah. what hope is there for everyone else? Um, and then the other thing was the, for the first time it's been uh, trans, uh, transported or transmitted via a passenger on, a, on an airline plane, someone who, who picked up the disease. He was an American Liberian, got sick in Liberia. Uh, well, sorry, got infected in Liberia, didn't realize he was sick, got on a plane, came to Nigeria. Right. And as he got off the plane, realized he was sick and it, he sadly died as well. Has uh, he transmitted it to anyone in there's Nigeria? There's been some secondary cases in Nigeria yeah. as well now. Uh, I think a doctor and a nurse, I think it's four or five. So, um, this is worrying. I don't think there's any doubt about it being worrying. And as you, as you probably know, the, the World Health Organization are meeting today. They've got a sort of an emergency response meeting to decide uh, on what the international response should yeah. be. So when you travel and you don't know you've been infected, yeah. then that's an, e that's an easy way to infect other people at the other end, obviously, right? Yeah, I mean, easy and not easy. So there's a big, uh, you know, there's quite a lot of confusion in the media about how infectious this is. You know, mm. it's not a respiratory pathogen. It's not like the guy on the plane is going to be coughing right. over other people and passing it like that. So no one on the plane got sick, but the people who get sick are the medical staff who try right. and look after you when you're bleeding, uh, vomiting, diarrhea. But again, the, 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 you know, the important thing is we know how to make sure that doesn't happen. We know that if the medical staff are properly wearing the full protective equipment mm -hmm. and have been trained in how to, 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 to use it, how to wear it, how to decontaminate, then they won't get sick. Yeah. But again, unfortunately, you know, when this guy got off the plane, as I understand it, the, the first responders, if you like, they obviously don't have that uh, equipment available. Mm. They, they did their best. Um, but it's, yeah, it's very sad for those. Who now, in Guinea, in, in Sierra Leone and Liberia, Liberia yeah. in the hospitals there, are they gowning up completely? Well, this is, this is one of the problems. So there, there have been uh, at least 60 deaths now among healthcare workers. Mm. And all those healthcare workers have been people who unfortunately didn't have access to, to mm. the full equipment. Um, so they're, they're wearing uh, gloves, they're wearing masks, uh, maybe aprons. Yeah. Um, and you would hope, you'd like to think that would protect you and, and it, it should protect you because this virus uh, doesn't bore its way through the skin, you know, it, 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 but it gets in through cuts, it gets in through mucous membranes. Mm -hmm. And the problem is all of us all the time, even if you're wearing gloves, you know, if you're not careful, you touch your nose, yeah. you scratch your eye. <laughs> right. And if you've got Ebola on your fingers, that's how you're going to get infected. Yeah. At least that, that's our current understanding. Yeah. You were telling me before, even if you have a gown, you have to know how to take it off. Yeah, you have to know how to take it off because if you think about it, if you take this thing off in the wrong way uh, you, and you, you're not careful, you'll be touching the outside of it with your, you know, if you take your gloves off first, for example, and then you take everything else off. 
So you need training and, right, and, and, right. and people buddy up and, and help each other get the gowns on and off, make sure they decontaminate. <clears throat> now, as you know, a couple of Americans were infected mm. and flown mm. back to the U.S. Mm. Um, for treatment. Yeah. Is that a good idea? A lot of people here are going nuts over it. Yeah, I know. Well, I've been, uh, <laughs> I've been following the news media. And in fact, I've, I've, had, I've done a few interviews with people like Associated Press and, and mm -hmm. some of the other agencies. Um, well, I think there's several issues there. The, 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 the first issue is about the, the treatment they were given. They've been given this drug called ZMAP, which is a humanized monoclonal antibody. It's a cocktail of three yeah. antibodies. Right. It works in, or at least it appears to work in, in, a, in the monkey model. It's been given to, I think, eight primates. Uh, it was given relatively soon after the virus was given, so I think within 24 hours, within 48 hours, certainly before the monkeys got sick. Uh, but it seemed to be effective. Yeah. And then on the basis of that, it was given uh, on a compassionate basis to two Americans who got sick in Liberia. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, and, and they've both they've both done relatively well. They they then were brought to the United States, um, and uh, they they. Uh, appear to be doing well. So, but whether that's the the treatment, yeah, or who knows? That's the the natural N history, equals two. You know, knows, it's yeah. too small. <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, is there anything wrong with bringing back your expatriates who are sick? Uh, we do it for other conditions. One of your was it Trump? I think Donald Trump uh, said that uh, they should be left to sort of rot in Africa. Yeah. What was his expression? Maybe you don't want to go into this on Twitter. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what he said. But basically, I don't think it was a very helpful comment. Yeah. And you can be sure that uh, if someone like him was sick. Uh, in Africa, they sure. want to come home. Well, in, in your country, you would bring citizens back yeah, and treat them. Yeah, of course you? we would. It's what, yeah. it's what you do. I mean, yeah. so, uh, but I also actually think it's a smart move anyway because, um, uh, you know, if you are uh, sitting in the United States and you're worried that someone might get off a plane with this just, just like they did in Nigeria, well, isn't it better to have had a bit of a heads up about yeah, how we manage course, it? How do we do our procedures? How do we care for people? So. I don't think it's. A, I think it's a sensible thing to do, but there are issues around the, 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 the you know use of these drugs. Sure, I mean it's, and this is why we need to have BSL four labs to study them and yeah. vaccines because you you need to have challenge experiments which you can only do with virus. Yeah, you can only do so much with pseudotype viruses and yeah. so forth. You yeah. have to have Ebola virus in an animal model, and it has to be done in a BSL four. And as you may know, right now there are some people in the U.S. Who are calling for a shutting down of mm. BSL-4 and 3 labs? I have. Uh, <laughs> I find it extraordinary. But I mean, this country is extraordinary in so many ways. But um, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, now I've, 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 um, uh, I've, I've come, well, I, I was at Harvard uh, before I came to here to, to be with mm. you. And um, I don't think I'm, I'm um, spilling any secrets here that, you know, I think it's pretty well known. They have a BSL-4 lab there. But uh, they. In Boston, yeah. Boston, yeah. yeah. Sorry, in Boston. But, um, you know, they've, uh, I think, have had some difficulties to be able to do the kind of work that you want to do in those it's not facilities. Open. It's not opened yet. Right. The NEEDLE, the, Nor the National Emerging Infectious Diseases Laboratory. And do you know why it's not opened? Yeah, because the, the neighborhood is, has been objecting. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so that is well known. So, I mean, uh, that's nuts, though, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. So I went, I visited it, actually, and did a documentary couple right. of years ago. It's a right. wonderful facility. Yeah. yeah. And we need places like that. And that's where the Ebola and Marburg and, and Lassa therapies will come from. Of course. So I, I don't understand it, no, why doesn't. people don't, don't get it. I guess we don't do a good enough job communicating that. Well, that's why. I mean, it's true, actually. I think, I think you, you know, one can blame the public, but really it's our job. Uh, and, you know, is it any wonder? I mean, you, you've got to, you know, you and I have both been doing media work in the last few days trying to sort of yeah. get a sensible balanced message out there and there are some really good journalists really good reporters mm -hmm. who really want to do that um, but then there are also people who realize it makes a better story to have a dramatic headline and to make it all sound scary and yeah. then if, yeah. if that's what people think then no wonder that they're, they're not they're not going to want to people working on that that yeah. pathogen but i think i think the other issue around the new treatments is how we move from developing and designing new drugs, which people are doing. I think the American government have invested quite a lot in that in recent years, which is great. But how you move from there to actually knowing which drugs are effective in humans. It's hard, yes. And we're, we're you know, we, we, this drug's been used on a compassionate basis. Um, there are calls now for using these drugs more widely. But I, I, I really think we're not quite approaching the whole situation the way we should. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, the regulatory hurdles that we make for clinical trials are, uh, you know, they, they might be fine for some, you know, tablet that somebody's going to take once a day for the rest of their life to deal with their itchy right. feet. Right. You know, but that's not what we're talking about here. 
uh, we're talking about the need to get potential treatments into clinical trials where they're needed very quickly. And so sure. all, the, all the steps that we normally go through, you know, for example, the phase one testing, which mm -hmm. is to see, you give it to volunteers and you see is it safe in right. them. Right. Well, let's take uh, ZMAP or let's take any other new drug which is being developed. Do we really care whether it causes headaches and a bit of fever in healthy volunteers? No, we don't. No, because these people are, these people are good dying likely from to disease. die. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> yes. we, we have to cut yeah. through some of that. And, well, and that's what happened in, when AIDS emerged, right? Yeah. The FDA was going at its usual plotting rate, yeah. and the patient said, we need yeah. drugs. Yeah. And that, went, uh, that became fast-tracking, yeah. that, which is good. It fast-track. I mean, the sad thing is that the African uh, people living in villages are not really, they don't really have this voice, this no. advocacy for fast-track. Hopefully their governments will push for it. And although we don't want to detract from the important message about, you know, this disease will be controlled by public health measures, by people g g isolating themselves, not spreading the disease, etc. Mm. Mm. That's the most important message. But on the other hand, uh, if we are going to develop treatments, we have to take... You, the only way you're going to see if a drug works is by trying it in a clinical trial yeah, yeah, during yeah. an outbreak. Do you think that there's a place for a vaccine? Um, you know, the incidence isn't huge, and you could argue that a good antiviral or monoclonal therapy might be enough. I think, uh, I think, I certainly think vaccines should be developed. Quite how they would be used and who they would be used in yeah. is, is hard to know. But I, th I think we need a sort of a dual approach. We need to develop drugs and we need to develop vaccines. Um, nobody's ever going to suggest we vaccinate the whole of West Africa. Of course. That wouldn't make sense. But, you know, if we had a vaccine now that we could do some kind of ring vaccination or mass vaccination. Yeah. When there's an outbreak, you when can there's do an outbreak. that. Exactly. But of course, yeah. the, the, the problem is, um, and, and this relates to, so you may have seen some criticism in the media that says, you know, it's more on the web, you know, it's the conspiracy theories, it's mm. the angry mob. Oh, why were these secret drugs only reserved for Americans? Why weren't they given to Africans? You know, there's a sort of bit of a hullabaloo. Yeah. But yeah. It, it, that's inappropriate. Basically, the, the situation is we can't even convince these frightened villagers who've never come across anything like this before to come to hospital to have simple drips, which we know will increase their chance of survival. Really? An IV drip? An IV just, drip. Just you, saline? Yeah. If you get fluid into people and stop huh? them going into shock, they, they die of, 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 of shock. They, they become dehydrated. They become acidotic. Their metabolism's deranged. Their organs shut down. They don't die from uh, bleeding, mm -hmm. usually. And, and we know that the mortality rate is 90%. But if you treat people, if you get them early and treat them with fluid, you don't save everyone by any means, but the mortality drops to about 60%. So, but if you think about it, if we can't even convince people to do that, yeah. then it would be totally inappropriate <laughs> to be going with an experimental drug and course, saying, oh, yeah. try our drug. And of course, you'll, you'll remember the HIV stories where people felt that HIV was being trialed in, in Africa right. you know, in a, for, for the West's Pol benefit. Polio and, vaccine. Yeah, and right. they were being used for guinea pigs. So... <laughs> So I don't think yeah. so. So I don't think you know. Even if we had a vaccine now, let's say we had a vaccine today, could you really imagine trying to get that into the communities that need it? It would be really difficult. You know, this is really important to remember. People here and in the UK have a different view of healthcare. They yeah. think you, know, you just go to the hospital and you get treated, but yeah. it's not the case clearly because yeah. people are afraid, as you said. And, yeah. and if you do go to hospital, you're not always going to get the appropriate care. Mm, exactly. Right? So part of the work, we, part of the, the research we're, we're doing through our Health Protection Research Unit, uh, starting to do is to understand these behaviours. You know, in fact, it comes mm -hmm. back to the same thing we talked about for managing brain infections in the UK or in America. It's all about how people behave, what governs how a doctor behaves when they're faced with a patient, what governs how a villager in Africa behaves yeah. when their you know, husband has got sick. Um, so there is a role for, for, for yeah, studying these because sure. ultimately if, if you study people's behavior, you can change it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's not something I think most people think of. It's when not what your average molecular virologist spends his time worrying right, about. That's right. So you have plans to go to, to any of these Western African possibly, countries? Possibly, possibly, yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're putting together a team to, to go out there. What would you do? Well, the, 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 so we have people there at the moment through our unit. We have people on the diagnostic side. Mm -hmm. So there's the, uh, there's the diagnostic virology lab. We have people on the um, uh, public health side uh, working with governments there, advising on outbreak control. But actually, uh, what is also needed is just uh, sensible people on the wards, clinicians, mm -hmm. who can um, help look after patients, put drips in, etc. So 
and we have, I, I don't think we, you know, we've got discussion back in Liverpool at the moment. I don't think our most junior doctors, I wouldn't send them, I don't want yeah. them going. But sensible people like Lance and others who've worked overseas mm -hmm. um, uh, who can stay calm in a difficult situation, who can follow the training and um, who can, uh, you know, it, it's not rocket science in terms of the medicine, it's about putting drips up, giving fluid, acid-based balance, it's what we've all done. Uh, in our right. past, in our training. I haven't done it for a few years, so there's a bit of a debate uh, about whether <laughs> people like me would be useful. Um, on the one hand, uh, I mean, I've done, because I still do a little bit of work overseas, um, I'm probably a bit fresher than ma many of my consultant colleagues. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't go out myself without, again, spending a bit of time on ITU, just getting up to ITU speed. ITU being? The intensive care unit. Uh, but also, I have a sort of policy in my institute, is I, I, I don't ask people to do things that I'm not prepared to do mm -hmm, myself, be mm -hmm. that stay up all night working on a paper or writing a grant, washing up the coffee cups, <laughs> right. uh, or, or maybe going out. Yeah. And then the other thing is, if, we are, if we're serious about trying to set up some of these studies to look at treatments, and, and, and we've worked on these, I've, I've done treatment trials for hemorrhagic fevers before in Asia. Um, I've done trials with new antiviral drugs in, in, mm -hmm. in Japanese encephalitis. Um, then you know it'd be helpful to go out there and try and work with the African doctors and the governments to work out what, what the best right. approach would be. Well, good luck if you do go. Thank you very much.